With the rise of Y2K fashion, we witnessed the resurgence of the lower tracksuits, butterfly hair clips, and of course, those iconic low-rise jeans. But there's one particular trend that has caught my attention recently, ruffled clothing. From tops to dresses, this trend has been popping up everywhere all over the internet, which also includes this dress that has literally been all over my Pinterest for the past couple weeks. So I did what anyone else would do, and I reverse Google image search this dress, and I found out it's from the brand Fancy, and that it was $300. <gasps> So instead of paying that much for a dress right now, I figured why not make that dress? So let's get started on it. For supplies, you're going to need a measuring tape, 4.5 crochet hook, stitch markers, scissors, a darning needle, and of course, the yarn. So this is a rough, a very rough, very, very, very rough outline of how the dress is going to look. In the front, it's going to narrow down into like an off-centered point, while in the back, it's going to slowly narrow off to one side, leaving a little of a plateau. So we're gonna start by measuring your hip, waist, and bust area, so we can just kind of map out the dress. Here are my measurements, if you're curious, and then I just halved them to get the measurements for the front and the back piece. And then, little spoiler! I started making the dress wrong because I forgot that crochet can stretch a bit. So my original plan was to follow the outline and make everything exactly half my measurements, but as you soon will see, that didn't quite fit right. So if I were to do this again, I would subtract about like two inches maybe from my measurements to make up for the stretching that's gonna happen. So starting on the front bust area of the dress, make a slip knot and just start chaining like how you normally do. Definitely just chain away. Pay no attention to the fact that I was doing this off screen and didn't realize that. So I roughly chained about 50 because that's how much I needed to reach 16 inches, but you can do more or less to get the length that can fit your measurement. Also make sure to measure it on yourself just to double check that it will fit. I forgot to do that, but do as I say, not as I do. So the next step is that you're gonna be doing a lot of double crochets and I mean a lot of double crochets. I did about 11 rows of just plain double crochet, so do whatever works best for you. In my last video when I was using double crochets and I was like, why are the edges so wobbly? Everyone pretty much commented and said to do, oh shoot, what is it called? <laughs> I think it was like a single, a double single crochet. Basically, it's how to keep the edges straight when you're doing double crochet like so. And I forgot to film it when I was making the dress. So here's a little practice square. So when you get to the end of your work, you're just going to chain one, turn your work over like how you normally would, except now in this open stitch, we're going to do a single crochet stitch. So you just go in, have two loops, boom, single crochet. So from here, now you have one loop on your hook. So you're gonna go into this back stitch over here, this one. So just go into the back one and then you're just gonna do a single ah! but actually make it through the loop. And I know it kind of looks a little weird right now, but trust me, just keep double crocheting and it will turn out fine. Look at that. So here's what we got so far for the dress. It isn't wearing a white shirt, so you can't really see. But for me, I'm almost done covering the chest area with this. I think I'm gonna go maybe to here. And then I'm gonna do one decrease on each side just to kind of give it like the snatched waist. But it looks like it's just really like snatched. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm really excited to see how this turns out. So right now I have about 11 rows. And now all that I'm gonna do is just do a decrease on both sides, so like one here and one here, just for one row. I don't want to take it in too much. Now, depending on your size and like how much you're following along, you might have more or less rows than I do before you want to start decrease. And you could even have more decreases than I do, which if you do, I recommend to keep it just at the end and just do one decrease per side per row until you get to like what length that you want, just to like keep it even. And I will show you how to do a decrease for double crochet. Let's get into that. So instead of doing what we've been doing before, forget exactly what it's called, with the single double crochet, the line straight, we're going to act as if you're doing a normal double crochet. Yarn over one, insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over, pull out, just like a normal double crochet, Yarn over, pull through the first two hooks, two loops, I guess. So now that you have two, 
You're gonna yarn over, but this time you're gonna go into the second stitch like that. Yarn over, pull through. So now you have four loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through the first two. Now you have three. Yarn over and pull through all eh, the three of them. Just like that. And so just continue to crochet as normal unless you end up in the same boat as I was with this huge knot. <gasps> Skilled crocheters out there can see the absolute horror that I had to deal with. You can see the absolute disgust I have been trying to figure this out. It literally took me three hours to detangle that baby. Three hours. But luckily I did get through it. So tiny update. I did two rows of decreases on the middle part because I did one round with like a decrease on each side and then I did a normal round and then I thought that I wanted it to go in just a little bit more. So I did one more decrease. What the dog doing? He's not a fan. I know it doesn't really look like much right now, but this is definitely a trust the process moment. For me, this is like a good length for where I want to start increasing again to give room for the hips. So for me, this is about 12 inches. Once again, you could do more or less. It really doesn't matter, just as long as it feels right. It's also, I'm just making this up as I go. In this next available stitch, I am just going to do a double crochet and then another double crochet in the same exact stitch. And then just continue double crocheting like normal. And then in the last stitch on the other side of the row, we're just gonna do the same thing, do an increase and double it. And then I'm just gonna do another row of increases until I get the width that I would want. The hip measurement that I needed for my hip length was 18. So I'm gonna try to go until roughly 18. Right now, currently, I'm just at 16. So we'll get there. Here is where we are with the dress. I know, nothing to write home about, but that's fine. As you can see, it's longer than my shorts right now, so I think it's a good time to start doing like the point. In the picture of the dress, this one, it kind of goes into like a point in the front. So now I just kind of have to decide where I want that point to be. So if this is the front facing side of the dress, I want the point to be over my left leg, which would be over here. And I want the point to sit probably about here. And now I'm just gonna slowly make the dress go that way. Actually, maybe a little more over here. So I'm just gonna make the dress slowly go into a point like this, which by the way, I do wanna add, I did 20 rows of just double crochet back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, just to get into the length where it kind of covered the goods. You know what I mean? So to make the pointed end, I first chose the spot that I wanted to be the longest point of the dress. Then I folded the dress over so that the spot where I wanted the point to be was at the fold. After folding it, you'll notice that one side has more length compared to the other side. So on the long side, I marked where the short side met. And then from there, I just kept doing decreases until I hit that point that I marked. And then once I hit that mark, I did decreases on both sides until I got to the point at the very end. All right, I just finished the front part of the dress. This is what it looks like. Not bad, not bad. Now I'm gonna do pretty much the exact same for the back side of this up until about like here before the dip happens because the dip on the back is a little bit different. So we gotta do it a little bit different. Let's jump to that. So new plan for the dress so that I can actually fit into it. What I think I'm going to do for it is just chain, make a chain to fit over here, which would be like the booty area and leave this all open back. So I could just tie like a chain rope through the back to tighten it. So that way I can easily put the dress on and off without struggling way too hard. So I'm just gonna do a chain, whatever length this is. I'm gonna do a chain there and then kind of mimic the rest of the dress up to here. Just enough to cover like my butt. So yeah, that's the plan. It's gonna be a little bit different from the inspiration dress, but I think it'll still be okay. So it has been a while since I last recorded. A lot has changed. This is the back. I did 45 chain across. And then after the chain, I did one row with a decrease on both sides just to help it like cinch in a little bit. Even though my measurement said that it should be 18 across for the hip area, this one is about 16 inches across just because it, it wasn't fitting quite right, so I needed it to be a little bit tighter because I did forget that this stretches. So because it stretches, it doesn't have to be my exact length because otherwise it'll just fall off. So I'm keeping the front piece as it is 
with 18 inches across, but the back piece is gonna be 16 inches across. If I was doing this again, I probably would have both pieces be 17 across to make room for the stretchiness of it. So after looking at the picture again, I realized that the dress kind of in an angle like this in the back, so one side slants all the way down, and then this side would stay the same. So to do that, we're just gonna pick a side and then do decreases on only that side until you get the length that you want. Cause it also kind of looks like it tapers out a little bit in the edge. So it's not like a sharp point. It kind of goes to like a flat. We'll just do decreases until it feels about right. And then we'll take it from there. The front piece is done. And now the back piece is also done. Yeah! I literally just did decreases all the way until I got to a point where I decided what kind of plateau off because I didn't want like a point. And then I just did one decrease on this side so it's not like a sharp edge. But now we are going to connect both of them and we're going to do that with a mattress stitch. Let's get into it. So basically what we're going to do is where the hip length started, where we started to do the increase again, that is where we're gonna attach the hip part of this. We're leaving it as an open back. However, on the front piece, the way that I did this, the point is not directly in the middle. The point is a little bit on the side. So this length is a little bit longer than this length. And coincidentally enough, because we have the plateau in one area, this length is longer than this length. So I'm gonna line up the short edges and then the long edge to long edge. Just make sure you're starting at the same row that you wanna start at for both sides. But I'm just gonna use this stitch marker and attach this one to that one like so, cause that's where it's gonna be starting. And then same thing on this side. And then I'm gonna attach these two stitches here. So to do the blanket stitch, you are gonna need a yarning needle like this. So it's pretty simple. You're just gonna do outer loop to outer loop. And pull through and then go on the other side outer loop to outer loop and you're just going to go back and forth doing that until you reach the end so i've just attached the pieces i've not tried it on yet which is a little risky but if it doesn't fit figure it out if it doesn't fit okay my camera died and i'm pretty sure that i was mid-sentence when it died so i'm just gonna do a little recap the dress it does fit. I realize now that I attached it more on the hips area than the waist area. So it's just gonna sit a little bit lower, which is fine. So I'm gonna make some chains so that I can lace up the back and actually like cinch it in. And to make this part a little bit tighter, cause I don't wanna have to rework the whole entire thing. I might make a rope of chains again and kind of make a belt in the middle of this dress. So it's gonna be a little different than my originally planned, but before I do that, I am going to make the ruffles that are gonna give it more of a ruffle effect. First thing that I'm gonna do is I'm just going to slip stitch in every single spot, like on the edge available, just to make it easier to attach the ruffles. And then after the slip stitch, I'm just going to do two double crochets in each of the slip stitches so that it kind of like bunches and makes like a ruffle effect. That's the game plan. That's what I'm gonna do. Let's do it. Looking at the picture again, I realized that there's three spots where the ruffles go like longer than the original cut of the dress. So I think to do that, I'm just gonna like chain on those three areas pretty long and then do the same thing how I created the ruffles on the chain. So I'm gonna do that. This is like the plateau part. I'm doing it on the two corners of the plateau and then of course at the point. So I'm gonna do that and we'll see how this dress turns out. Just in case anyone was curious as to how I make the long draping ruffles, all I do is pick where I want it and then I just chain for, it really doesn't matter how long and I honestly don't count how many chains, just until it feels right. I think that looks pretty good. So now you just double crochet all the way until you get back. Pretty easy. And then I just connect it. I go, so it's like chain, double crochet, connect, double crochet, double crochet, connect and keep going. So I do three rows. I almost forgot the most important step. On the first double crochet down, I do double, double crochets, like an increase in each one. So two stitches into one chain. That's how it gets the ruffle effect. And then the next two rows is just normal double crochet. Nothing fancy about it. Now we have to make the roses that are on like the side of the dress. So 
So I am following this tutorial that I found on TikTok. Um, I want to say Le Frugal. It says to start with a slip knot and chain 50. So I'm going to do that really quick. So I don't really explain this too well. You can either go check out her TikTok or just watch this a couple of times and maybe you'll get the gist of it. But really, you should go check out her TikTok. She explains it a whole lot better than I do. And then it says do 49 half double crochet stitches. And now it says to chain five. One, two, three, four, five. Five. Turn our work and double crochet into the first stitch. Then skip two and place double crochet into the third stitch. Okay, let's do that. And then chain two and place another double crochet into the same stitch. One, two, and then double crochet. Then skip two and place a double crochet into the third stitch. Chain two and place another double crochet into the same stitch. Repeat until the end. I think the goal is to get these little like V shapes. So that's what we're gonna do. Got that, got the little V shape holes. And then it says to chain three, one, two, three, uh, turn your work link. And then it says place eight double crochet into the first hole. Which she started her first hole with the wide one, like the top wide one, if that makes sense. Wish me luck, I guess, I don't know. And then slip stitch into the smaller V, like the point of the next V, and then just repeat the process all the way through. All right, and then it says place 13 double crochets in the last hole. So it kind of looks like this. And then I think you just roll it up. I think it's supposed to be like this. Wow. Cute! I'm just gonna like ditch the excess through to kind of hold it up. But so now I just have to make the strap for like around the waist and the straps for the back. And then I might do something for the front to make it a little bit more interesting, but then we're done. So let's see the final product. Okay, are you ready for the big reveal? All right. And yes, I am wearing stuff underneath because it is a little bit see-through, but I kind of made this as like more of an idea for like a swimsuit cover up. Look at how cute it is. I think the ruffles look nice with like the dress or with the dress, with the flower detail. I think it's really cute. I did end up doing a little scrunch in the top part. Um, to do that is really easy. You just thread a piece of yarn through and then tie it in a knot on the other side. And then it has kind of like a sweetheart neckline. So I am absolutely obsessed with how this dress came out. I think it looks so good, so cute. Like, okay. I think this would be cute for like a beach cover up. Maybe like we go into Hawaii or somewhere tropical. So yes, it did turn out a little bit different than our inspo picture, but I think it looks good overall. I'm really proud of myself for making this and I hope that you guys like this and let me know if you end up making it. Tag me on Instagram or something if you end up making it. I would love to see it. Maybe I made the, the strap pieces a little too long, but that's okay. And also make sure to subscribe if you wanna see more stuff that I'm gonna be making because I will make more cute little crochet stuff. So if you stayed this long, thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.